Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Eli with Premiere on Script, and guys, it's been a while. It's been over a month since my last post, and a lot of things have happened since then, one of them being this number right here, over 100 subscribers. So that's really exciting. Thanks for following along with these videos, and uh, like I said, it's been over a month since my last video where I share with you guys how I mess around and read and change and create markers in my Premiere project. Uh, and I know it's been a while, so today I want to give you guys something really good. And, and you know, when I am thinking about scripting and I'm thinking about uh, what I can do in Premiere, what's the best thing that I can receive from someone, uh, it's, it's probably some good, juicy documentation. And so that's what I'm going to share with you guys today is this Premiere Pro Extend Script API Effect Component Reference Book. That's a mouthful. Anyways, this is going to give you, after you get through this, this uh, tutorial today, and you're comfortable getting, setting, and modifying effect values on effects that are applied to your clips. This is just going to be a nice little document that you can pull off the Premiere on Script website that'll help you look up uh, effects and their properties a little bit easier. This probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you yet because we're going to dive in on, on what it means. So let's get started. In this movie, I want to go over a couple different things. First off, I want to talk to you guys about getting and modifying effect property values from within the uh, effect control panel up here. So if you have a Lumetri color setting, you know, going in and changing the contrast to what you'd like it to be or the highlights or modifying any of these properties. And actually, it's really not that difficult. We're going to whip through this get set value example that I have already created here. That's going to go really quick. So I also want to share with you guys a little sync setting script that I have. Uh, that way, if, you know, say I have uh, some color on this clip right here, and I have all my settings set up. I'm just going to do this really quick to show you what this script does. What I would normally do is, you know, copy and paste the attributes over onto my other clips. And then these would all be the same, right? All these clips down here in the timeline have the same color attributes. But then what if I'm going through to a spot and I see, like, ah, uh, I don't know, I really don't like the way the color looks like this, or I really just want to instead you know blast a vignette and I want that to translate throughout the rest of these clips that I have here because I want them to be all synced up what I have is this little script that'll just target the selected clip and you run it and it'll sync that up so now all of these will have some super sweet vignettes on them too uh, to show you just to show you that that actually worked we'll just make it really uh a really weird white vignette and you can see that that just transfers over it doesn't matter how many clips or cuts you have throughout all of your clips it's going to go through and make sure that all of your effect values are all synced up so that's what we're going to get to once we cover the basics but in order to get there we have to cover the basics now first i'm also going to put a little big fat disclaimer on what we're about to go into and let you know that we are not going to be covering adding effects to clips there's no way in the api right now to you know target this clip and say i want to add lumetri color or gaussian blur any of the default effects that we have there's no way to add those onto the clip so far maybe they'll be coming out with that soon but for now all we have is modifying clips and for now i'm happy with that i'm happy it's better than nothing so let's jump in to how to do that now the first thing we have to go into is how to get to these effects how do we access them and in the last couple of videos that I've posted, uh, we've talked about accessing the active sequence via app.project.activeSequence and then targeting a video track or an audio track, which is just this video tracks uh, array and you have to target which one you want. So if we wanted to target the very first video track, we would go video tracks zero. And if we wanted to target the first clip on that first video track, we would target clips zero. So that's what I have going down here. And Inside that first clip, what you will now target is components. So up here I have a variable, it's called effect, and I am linking the components collection. So this is an array of, uh, of the components that we have up here in our effect controls. I'm linking that to effect. Now, we're going to just make a little for loop here. And what this is going to do is loop through all the effects applied to the clip. So we're going to do this by doing a little for loop that says a is equal to zero as long as a is less than effect.numItems a++. 
and I'm just going to have it alert us, you know, effect number zero is the effect in the display name. We're going to get that by going effect a dot display name. And just keep in mind that this is uh, the index number tacked onto the end of effect. But if you were really accessing it through the long, you know, index string, it would be components a rather than effect a. This is just, you know, remember that's tagged onto that variable. So let's run this and see what we get. You can see effect number zero is opacity. Effect number one is motion. And effect number two is lumetri color. All right. Looks pretty solid to me. So now that we've seen those and we know which index number here is going to target which effect we have in our effect controls panel, we can take it a little bit deeper. So let's do that. Let's loop through all the properties of the effect that we want to target. And because it's one of the more complex effects that we can have, we're going to go through and loop through Lumetri Color and see what properties we can see within the effect. So if we come out here, the way we access that is we're going to go to effect number two, because we went through this loop, we saw that effect number two was Lumetri Color. And then we're going to target properties.numItems. And we're just going to do the same for loop uh, through that and do something very similar right here. We're going to say property number A is effect number two, properties A, display name. So same code, one level deeper. Instead of components, we're going into that component and targeting the property. And let's see what we get when we run this. So we're going to see that the property number zero is blob. Property number one is um, nothing. Property number two is basic correction. Property number three is nothing. Four is nothing. Five is nothing. Six is input LUT, HDR white, white balance. Okay, now we're getting into some of the stuff that, uh, you know, we're a little bit more familiar with highlights, shadows, whites. And I'm not going to actually go through this entire script because there's like 99 different properties that you can look into inside of Lumetri Color. But I want you to just take note of how many like weird values there are in here that are just nothing. And I don't know quite why that is, but you'll find that as you're navigating through and trying to customize your effects through scripting, you'll find that there's a lot of these weird effects that just don't exist. Property number 62 is nothing. So how do we handle that? Well, we don't. You're not going to be able to get any values, like read any values of what that is. You're not going to be able to set them to anything. They're kind of useless. So when we write scripts, we're just going to have to test against that and know that this effect API isn't perfect. But as I've said, you know, once before in this video, I do believe that something is far better than nothing. And coming back to this documentation that I'm providing to you guys, really easy to use. Say I wanted to go into Lumetri Color and check out all of the properties. I can just control find or control F, come down, I find the effect name, Lumetri Color, and I can see all of those things that we were just looping through. It's a whole lot easier then, you know, returning all of those properties back to you and trying to find out which property you're trying to target. You can just figure out which ones are here by the documentation. If I wanted to find, you know, crop, what am I going to do here? Let's see. We'll go down and there's crop. So left, top, right, bottom. Really easy to find effects and to use this. So check that out when you guys get a chance. Anyways, we haven't even made it to uh, reading and writing these values yet. So let's, uh, I'll shut up and we'll just move on to what you guys really want to know. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come back out to this documentation and go back to Lumetri Color, just so we can reference that and not have to reference these uh, alerts anymore. So Lumetri. And now if I wanted to come in and say change the white levels in uh, this effect that I have applied to this clip, what I'm going to do is I can target property number 18. So if I come back to the script, we can see that I'm declaring a variable named wval, targeting effect number, and this should be two, effect number two, which is our Lumetri color effect, uh, properties number 18, which as we see in the documentation is our white value. And then I'm going to do get value. Now this is the first function that I'm going to share with you guys today. And really simple. It's just going to return to you back the value 
of whatever property you're targeting. So if we come in here and let's see what the white value is right now. The white value is zero. Okay, easy enough. What we're going to do after that is go back to effect number two, properties 18, and we're going to run set value. Now set value is almost as easy as get value. Uh, what you're going to do is pass in the value that you want to set it to. So I'm going to pass in wval plus 10, which is, should just increment whites up 10 every time we run the script. And then I'm going to put true. All this true does is forces Premiere to update its UI. Because if we don't update the UI, this whites value might not change. It might look not look like anything happened, but then your image, the color in it might change. And you'd be like, wait, nothing changed over here in the control panel, but uh, you know, my color value changed over here. What's going on? True, this true Boolean just forces Premiere to do that. So always throw the true in there. Just makes things a whole lot easier. And that's that. So let's run this and see if it works. Keep an eye down here on the whites value. Up by 10, up by 20. There you go. So it's just popping it up really quick and easy way to uh, customize the effect you have on there. Let's do this one more time just to kind of make sure you all get it. I'm going to go to effect number two, properties 15, which if we look over at our documentation, properties 15 is going to be contrast. And I'm going to set that value to 100 because I like a nice crunchy image. So let's see it do its job here. Well, it's set it to 100. Oh, there it is. There it is. It kicks in a little bit. Maybe not as much as I you know, wanted. Maybe we'll bump that up to 200 and make this uh, really crunchy. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. We can really see the, the nice white vignette <laughs> getting colored there. Anyways, let's get back to it. Uh, I'm going to comment these out because you guys get the whole deal. Get value, set value. The two functions that we're going to be covering today, they're really just that easy. But we're not done with our examples yet because I want to reiterate to you guys that, you know, when we were alerting those effect properties back and we saw all those spaces, uh, you know, those areas where it was returning a property that didn't even look like it was there. And when you look at the documentation, you know, all through here, uh, property number four is nothing, you know, and property number 65 is nothing. And you see that all throughout here. There's different areas uh, that are just returning nothing. Uh, so I just want to show you that that's not the only weird thing that's going on with this API right now. We're also getting weird results when we return back some of the properties. So you can't assume that it's just going to come back and you're going to set a value and it's going to work really simple and clean. So if I come out to a uh, weird example number one down here and I uncomment this stuff out. Comment that back out actually. Uh, what I'm going to do is declare a variable, make it white balance select and go to... Sorry, I had to change this back to effect number two. Properties number nine. Now, what is properties number nine? If we come back out here, we'll see it is the white balance selector. And that's this guy. And I wonder what that's going to return. I have no clue because I can't see the value. Uh, well, under this, I'm just going to alert wb select value to see what that is. And it should be a color value. You know, you'd think it comes back as an RGB or something like that. But when we run that, it's going to come back like this. And maybe some of you out there understand what this means as far as a color value goes. But I'll tell you, I do not. So if you do, man, it'd be great if you could comment under here and let me know what the hell's going on here. So now that we see that that value comes back and I don't know what to do with it, well, I really don't know how to set that value either. I know I can come down here and I can uh, get rid of this alert real quick. And I can set the value to this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3 true just like we did before uh, with the set value function I'll run that and comes back no errors I must have set that value somehow if I then uncomment this and alert it back we can see that that value has been changed to our one two three four five six one two three number but I mean I didn't see anything going on in here I didn't really see a whole lot when normally the white balance selector would like make things really different, right? Anyways, just to reiterate the fact that this stuff's weird, if you can figure it out, that's awesome, but it may take some trial and error 
just to do this one more time, we'll do the example of input LUT, which is going to be property number six. It's going to be this guy right here. And you'd think that the value that you want to pass into that is, you know, a string showing RA universal DCI, or if I wanted to do the phantom rec 709, I just pass in that string and it should work is what, you know, my thought was as I started getting into changing up these effects. Uh, but if we alert what that value is, we'll see it's zero, okay? And then if we change it to something uh, and we alert us again what that is, we'll see it comes out as six. Well, I just changed that to Alexa V3. Why isn't it coming back as a string Alexa V3, you know? So then I tried, I'll come down here and I'll, I, I try to set the value to the phantom rec 709 gamma input LUT, uh, thinking that it's gonna work just swimmingly, right? And then I run it and uh, there's that sound that you never wanna hear you know, an error is going down. So obviously that's not the way to do it. What I ended up finding out was that in order to do this and get it to be that Phantom Rec 709, I had to get into the editing mode, uh, property six, set value, and set it to 11 with the Boolean true. If I do that, then it comes over here and sets itself to Phantom Rec 709. So a lot of these things, like if you know how to use them and you figure them out, there's definitely ways to do it and make this uh, even more powerful. This might take a little bit of trial and error. So I have been talking for quite a while now, and I thought I'd get through this get set value example a whole lot quicker than I did. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this movie into two parts. Now that you know the basic info, you can go out and you can mess with it and have fun with it and do what you want. If you want to stick around, I'm going to be making a part two of this video where I'm just going to continue off from right here. And I will go through and walk through the sync setting scripts, which I find really helpful. I think you guys could find it really helpful. Or if you just want to stick around and see how uh, I might make up a script that could help me with something like this, uh, you know, see these things in an actual, you know, use application, uh, then stick around. And if so, I'll see you guys in the next video. If not, that's fine too. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to jump over to premiereonscript.com. Uh, this is going to be log number 13, and you can download uh, that effect documentation that I was scrolling through earlier.